It's the 1st of January, 2020. Boris Johnson has heralded a decade of prosperity for Britain. 2020 is upon us. And now we have a wonderful opportunity to unite as a country. Some of the firms involved in the refurbishment of Grenfell Tower have asked for immunity from prosecution for their witnesses. The coronavirus outbreak has been classified as a global health emergency by the World Health Organization. Ladies and gentlemen, it is B Day. At 11 o'clock this evening, we make our official departure from the European Union after 47 years. You wouldn't think that we were leaving the European Union where I'm standing at this moment in time, Eddie, because of inside City Hall, they've basically got European flags from all the different European member states all over the place. We've got European citizens here. There are stalls out. There are people giving advice. I'm afraid. I feel like some of my rights might be taken away. And then in Parliament Square, Eddie, people were wondering whether Big Ben was going to bong on Brexit Day. Well, these uh, people have managed to bring their own little version of Big Ben and they keep ringing the, the bell. It's 11 o'clock and it's Friday, the 31st of January 2020, and the United Kingdom has left the European Union. There are some that say we shouldn't celebrate tonight. Brexit Party leader Nigel Farage addressing thousands of Leave supporters who've gathered in Parliament Square tonight. Well, we are going to celebrate tonight, and we are celebrating tonight. Let's talk about these terrorist attacks in Streatham. Two people have been stabbed. Scotland Yard saying that armed officers shot and killed a man. Boris Johnson is preparing to chair his first meeting of the government's COBRA Emergency Committee. The World Health Organization says the coronavirus outbreak has become a pandemic, which means it's affecting the whole world. I'm going to cross over for some breaking news. I must level with you, level with the, the British public. Um, more families, uh, many more families, are going to lose loved ones before their time. Britain hasn't closed schools or banned visits to care homes. Sir Patrick Vallance doesn't think that would be appropriate right now. Our aim is to try and reduce the peak. Also, because most people, the vast majority of people, get a mild illness to build up some degree of herd immunity as well. We've had the uh, London Marathon cancelled. We've had pa St Patrick's Day celebration cancelled. The mayoral elections cancelled. The peak of the epidemic is coming faster in some parts of the country than in others and it looks as though London is now a few weeks ahead. Act immediately on the expert advice I support as your mayor and if you ignore this people will die as a result. Today I can announce that for the first time in our history the government is going to step in and help to pay people's wages. You heard Rishi Sunak there, the Chancellor saying unprecedented measures for unprecedented times, and very much so. Never did we expect, you know, if we went back a few weeks even, that we would have a government basically saying that it is going to help to pay the wages of people in this country. Huge numbers are complying, and I thank you all. The time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Unprecedented new measures restricting everyday life in the UK are now in force to try and suppress the coronavirus. We need aprons, we need disposable plastic gloves, long sleeves if possible, but we'll take the short type. He gets pretty desperate when the leader of the council rings up and says, look, I need to put out an appeal. Boris Johnson and the health secretary, Matt Hancock, have both tested positive for the coronavirus. It is the honour and the privilege of my life. That was Keir Starmer. It was supposed to be a special conference at the Labour Party today, so they were going to have, you know, the big fanfare, reveal the new leader. Of course, that wasn't possible considering what's happening with coronavirus. 
We've just received word that uh, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who has been uh, in hospital for the last 24 hours or so with symptoms of the coronavirus, uh, has been uh, admitted to intensive care. Today marks a sombre day in the impact of this disease as we join the list of countries who have seen more than 10,000 deaths. TfL workers really have turned out to be on the front line. 26 transport oh. workers have died. Most of those are bus drivers. The mayor's told the BBC he asks himself every day whether he could have done more to protect London's transport workers. I ask myself that question and the honest answer is maybe. Because we've lost 95% of passengers on the tube, 85% of passengers on buses, uh, we're struggling. And so we are... How long can you carry on for? Uh, probably uh, end of this month. You go back a month, we had Sir Patrick Balance, uh, the Chief Scientific Officer, talking about how 20,000 deaths would be a good outcome. Here we are now above that number. A minute's silence has been observed around the country for key workers who've lost their lives in the coronavirus pandemic. More than 100 healthcare staff have died, as well as cleaners, porters and bus drivers. We should have been going to the polls today to elect a mayor and London Assembly for another four years. However, almost eight weeks ago, the government announced the London elections would be cancelled due to coronavirus. Transport for London secured a government bailout worth £1.6 billion. We will have a test, track and trace operation uh, that will be world beating. Sorry, I'm late. This is Dominic Cummings with his press statement from the Rose Garden at Downing Street. We drove for roughly half an hour and ended up on the outskirts of Barnard Castle Town. If one of your most senior team wasn't paying proper attention to the rules, why should anyone else? Black, Asian and minority ethnic people are at significantly higher risk of dying from coronavirus. Thousands of people are taking part in anti-racism protests. It was quite a sight to see all these people on Vauxhall Bridge all of a sudden get down on one knee. The government has uh, bowed to pressure and agreed to fund free school meals. For the month of August, we will give everyone in the country an eat out to help out discount. And you have that clip there of Rishi Sunak. You've had some positive reaction to it, but also some ridicule. We had Labour saying that the government had promised us a new deal and all we got was a meal deal. The Public Accounts Committee says advising hospitals to discharge thousands of patients into care homes at the beginning of the outbreak without knowing if they had COVID-19 was a reckless and appalling error. The Education Secretary is defending a major U-turn over A-level and GCSE grades. There were unfairnesses within the system and we cannot be in a situation where we tolerate unfairness. The government is launching a campaign to get people back to work. Children are, on average, three months behind in their learning. The rising demand for COVID-19 tests has led to drive through test appointments being rationed. It turns out that I would be told to go to the Isle of Wight or maybe even Leicester. The capacity for testing is being diverted to other parts of the country. Hammersmith Bridge is on my right, so I can see the big sign on it saying foreshore area closed, no passing under the bridge. The government's due to outline details of controversial new Brexit legislation, which one cabinet minister's admitted will breach international law. Bob Neills, the Conservative MP for Bromley and Chislehurst. I'm a lawyer myself. I didn't ever tell my clients that they could burgle somebody's house in a limited and particular way. Low traffic neighbourhoods. You're driving along the road and there's just a bollard in the road. There's talk of a mini lockdown, but let's go straight now to Downing Street. The epidemic is doubling roughly every seven days. The chair of London Council's, Councillor Peter John. It's out of control to the extent that we don't know what the true figures are because testing isn't working in London. But you're uh, Minister I, I for London, Paul. What about the testing capacity moved out of London? There are 500 um, uh, test centres now. London needs to move to local COVID alert level high. The bankruptcy of TfL is entirely the fault of the current Labour Mayor of London. Well, Heidi Alexander is London's uh, Deputy Mayor for Transport. The Prime Minister is talking absolute rubbish. 
the Labour Party has suspended its former leader, Jeremy Corbyn. We're not going back to the full-scale lockdown of March and April. The measures that I've outlined are less prohibitive and less restrictive. For the second time this year, London, along with the rest of England, is in lockdown. The government's made a U-turn on providing free meals to disadvantaged children over the school holidays. Clinical trials suggest a significant breakthrough in efforts to develop a vaccine against the coronavirus. Croydon Council's racked up debts of one and a half billion pounds. The leader of Croydon Council, Councillor Hamida Ali. We have made mistakes. I have apologised um, both to you. Which mistakes have you personally made? London is going to be in tier two. 60,000 people have died from this wretched illness. Boris Johnson travelling to Brussels this week in a bid to salvage a post-Brexit trade deal. The biggest vaccination programme in British history has begun this morning. 90-year-old Margaret Keenan became the first person in the UK to be given the injection. So wonderful, really. We've seen very sharp, exponential rises in the virus. We've therefore decided to move Greater London into Tier 3, which is the very high alert level. Victims of the Windrush scandal will get their compensation increased. We've had enough of all this no it won't, yes it will, no it won't, yes it will kind of stuff. Well, it is panto season, isn't it? Oh, oh, no, it isn't. The Brexit panto season, it would be funny if it wasn't so serious. Greenwich Council says it has no choice but to ask schools to remain open following threats of legal action from the government. A smaller Christmas is going to be a safer Christmas and a shorter Christmas is a safer Christmas. This isn't about cancelling Christmas, but is he really telling us that allowing indoor mixing for five days is sensible? The European Union side are really, really positive about things. Boris Johnson saying it's a very serious situation, no deal, very likely. Here in London, the COVID-19 infection rate is still rising in every borough. The return of secondary school pupils in the new year will be staggered. Richard Watts has told the BBC he's flabbergasted. For the government to send a letter to every school governor in our borough threatening legal action against their school if they went through with it, only to find them do it themselves two days later, is really pretty astonishing. We're going to go to Downing Street and the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. We will introduce new restrictions in the most affected areas, specifically those parts of London, the South East and the East of England, which are currently in Tier 3. These areas will enter a new Tier 4. Those living in Tier 4 areas should not mix with anyone outside their own household at Christmas. So a new tier four for London mm. and the South East, largely driven yeah. by a new variant of the coronavirus. People have been told to stay at home. Non-essential retail will close, gyms will close, personal care, so hairdressers, for example, will have to close. Professor Whitty, if someone is packing a bag right now, listening to or watching this, trying to leave the South East by midnight tonight, what should they do? My short answer would be, please unpack it. Last night, some train stations in London were crowded as people left ahead of the new restrictions. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, has said the new coronavirus variant is out of control. We don't know how long this, these measures are going to be in place. And let's talk to Catherine West, who's a Labour MP for Hornsey and Woodgreen. Some businesses were open last night at half past four and learning that today they couldn't open their doors. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, said Boris Johnson should apologise. We have a Prime Minister who is so scared of being unpopular that he is incapable of taking tough decisions until it's too late. We're being shut down by countries across Europe. It started with the Netherlands last night. Uh, and now Ireland, Germany, Italy. France shut its border for 48 hours. Since then, no lorries or ferries have been able to leave the port of Dover. We're working to a solution, as I say. Cases here in London have more than doubled in a week. Let's talk to the deputy chair of London Council. We didn't expect it to happen as quickly as it has. So I would say be concerned, but be vigilant and do the right thing. We're now going to hear from the Prime Minister Boris Johnson. I'm very pleased to tell you uh, this afternoon uh, that we have completed a comprehensive 
Canada-style free trade deal between the UK and the EU.